Raise your hand if Excel's default settings have ever driven you just a little bit crazy. Maybe it's those leading zeros disappearing from your invoice numbers, the get pivot data function inserting itself whenever you reference a pivot table, or that new copilot icon following your every move. You see, Excel's default settings are built for the average user, but you and I, we're not average. So in this video, I'm going to show you 15 simple but game-changing Excel settings you absolutely need to change right now. Watch the video carefully because I'll be sharing a free resource you can open anytime you need a quick reminder of these settings, so you never need to Google them again. You enter a phone number like 07555 and Excel drops the leading zero. Now there are a few ways to prevent this. For one-off entries, you can simply type an apostrophe then type the number and press enter and this forces the format to become text. The apostrophe isn't visible on the face of the cell but if you look in the formula bar you can see it there. Plus we have the telltale left alignment to indicate this is now text and Excel is warning you that this looks like a number and it wants to convert it. Obviously we can just ignore the error and there's our number. However if you have a lot of numbers to enter like this Having to enter an apostrophe first is annoying. Instead, in later versions of Excel, you can now turn this automatic conversion off via the File tab, down at the bottom, Options, and then under Data, down at the bottom we've got Automatic Data Conversion. And simply uncheck Remove Leading Zeros and Convert to a Number. Click OK, and now when I type it in, it remains as I typed it. Again, we get the warning, which we need to ignore. Now, if you don't see that option in your version of Excel, the other option is to simply format the cells as text by the drop down here at the bottom text. Then when you type in the number, it remains as I typed it. Now, if you're entering phone numbers, you might prefer to insert spaces to make them easier to read. And you can do that by simply typing in a space as you enter it, but that requires extra typing. So the other option is to create a custom number format. Control one to open the formatting pane. On the number tab at the bottom, we've got custom. In here, simply type in zeros with spaces that represent the numbers in your phone number. Click OK. And now if I type it in with no spaces, Excel automatically adds them for me. Notice also that this is a number. And if we look in the formula bar, you can see it's dropped the zero, but it's padded with a zero at the front because of the custom number format. So you just need to decide which format of number is going to work best for you. If you work with data and tables, you'll have likely seen a formula like this and thought, wait, what is this sorcery? When you reference cells in tables, Excel automatically uses the table structured references. Personally, I love them. But if you find them confusing or annoying, you'll be pleased to know that you can turn them off in the options settings. Now, another way we can access the options is using the keyboard shortcuts Alt F T. Here we want the formulas tab and we want to deselect use table names in formulae. Click OK and now if I type in my sum formula and reference the profit column you can see it puts in the cell references rather than the table structured reference. It returns the same result so happy days! You build a beautiful dashboard or summary report but those light grey grid lines make it look unfinished. To turn them off, go to the View tab and then deselect grid lines. Now if you want to go the extra mile, head to the Page Layout tab and click on Background. Here you can browse to a custom background file to really make your report pop. Your reports instantly look more professional and intentional. Clean visuals, better first impressions, especially when sharing files with clients or your boss. You're typing the same long phrases or technical terms over and over, like quarterly revenue report or my online training hub. It's tedious and typos sneak in when you least expect them. If we open up the options, remember the shortcut is Alt F T. And then under proofing, we can go into auto correct options. And here we can create our own shortcuts. For example, I'm going to replace RR with quarterly revenue report. Click add. Let's do the same for my online training hub. We're going to shorten it to MOF. Click add, click OK and OK. Now when I type in MOF, it automatically puts in my online training hub. RR gives me quarterly revenue report. 
It's like having custom keyboard shortcuts, less typing, fewer typos, and way more efficiency, especially if you work with repetitive names or phrases. A quick pause. If you're watching this and thinking, okay, these settings are great, but I still feel like I'm just scratching the surface with Excel, you're not alone. A lot of people get stuck trying to piece things together with YouTube videos and random Googling, and it just takes forever. That's actually why I created my Excel expert course. It's everything I wish I had when I was learning Excel. Structured lessons, hands-on fast to practice with, and guidance when you need it to help you stop guessing and actually feel confident with the powerful stuff in Excel. So if you want to go beyond the settings and really upgrade your skills, whether it's for your job, a promotion, or just to finally feel like the Excel expert on your team, there's a link in the description and pinned comment where you can check it out. All right, let's get back to the settings. If you're using the latest version of Excel with Microsoft 365, you may have noticed the new Copilot icon popping up all the time, even when you're not using it. It's visually distracting and gets in the way. Luckily, in the options, we have a new Copilot tab. So Alt F T, Copilot. Here we can check the box to show Copilot icon only for highly relevant suggestions. Click OK, and now it's gone. Thank goodness. Of course, you can still use Copilot. It's available on the Home tab over on the far right. Click on it, and it brings up the Copilot task pane. So it's not gone for good. It's just not annoying anymore. Every time you insert a pivot table, Excel defaults to the compact layout. So you waste time switching to tabular layout, turning off subtotals, etc., just to get the layout you actually want. So to fix this, we'll go back into Options, Alt F T, on the Data tab. We've got Make Changes to the Default Layout of Pivot Tables, Edit the Default Layout, and here we can import a layout. So I can just import this one that I've already set up the way I want. Or you can use the drop downs here to choose the different settings if you want something slightly different. We can also access the pivot table options where there are some further settings that we can set as the default. I'm going to import this one. Click OK and OK. And now let's clear this pivot table. We'll go and insert another pivot table. Country in the columns, segment, product, and units sold. And just like that, it's picked up my default layout. By the way, if you have Microsoft 365, you'll notice the pivot table value fields now inherit the number formatting of the source data. So we can see there's our unit sold column. It's set to comma separator with no zeros. And if we look at the pivot table, it's picked it up. Perfect. If you work with pivot tables, you'll no doubt have referenced a cell in a pivot table. And instead of a normal cell reference like I5, we get the cumbersome get pivot data function. Let's say we want to calculate this as a percentage of the grand total. We'll format it as a percentage, and then we copy it down. And what happens? We get the same result on every row, and that's because the formula is hard keyed, which is a pain. The good news is we can turn this setting off. Simply select the pivot table on the pivot table analyze tab. On the far left, we've got options, and we can deselect generate get pivot data. Now, if I type in my formula, you can see we get the regular cell reference and I can easily copy it down to get my results. Perfect. That said, there are a lot of benefits to using get pivot data, which I cover in the video link to in the description. So I recommend you give it a chance and check out the video. If you're using the latest version of Excel with all the fancy new functions and you share your file with someone on an older version, they'll get a nasty surprise if they try to edit a formula or they trigger a recalculation. So to avoid this, you can make sure your files are backward compatible via the file tab, info, and then under inspect workbook, we can check for issues and check compatibility. We get this dialog box and we can click here and choose the versions of Excel that we want to check backward compatibility for. I only want to go back as far as 2019 and you can see we've got a few issues. It tells us the location, the sheet name. We can click on find and it will take us to the cell or object that's the issue. We can also click on the help link to understand more about it and what alternate options you have. We can check compatibility when saving this workbook. And if you have a lot of issues, you might find copying them to a new sheet handy because then you can work through them one by one. You copy one thing and Excel forgets the last thing you copied. 
And if you need to paste several things into different places, you can waste a lot of time flipping back and forth. The solution? Let me show you. Go to the Home tab, click on the little launch icon here in the bottom right corner of the clipboard group, and this opens the clipboard. It can store up to 24 copied items. For example, I've broken a long formula into steps to make it easier to write. Now I'm happy it calculates correctly, I want to consolidate these three formulas into one. So I'm going to select the first one, including equals, Control C to copy. It's now on the clipboard, escape. Let's go to the next one. I only need up to the equal sign for this one, Control C, escape. And the last one, again, just up to the equal sign. So now we've got the three components of my formula. I can go to the cell that I want to paste them in, in the formula bar, click on each element. So I want this formula, and then I'm subtracting the weekday. And instead of referencing step two's formula, I'm going to insert this one, press enter. And now I get my formula consolidated into one. And the clipboard has made it super quick and easy for me to copy those different elements of the formula. Now, the nice thing about the clipboard is you can copy text or images from other Office apps, your web browser, wherever, and they'll be available for you to paste as required. If you're using Excel for labels or templates or anything design related, the default ruler units might not match what you need. First of all, you need to turn the ruler on. We do that via the view tab and we want the page layout view. You also need to make sure that in the show group, ruler is checked and we can see it at the top of the screen there. The column width and row height are now in your default units. If I right click and edit the column width, you can see my default unit is centimeters but we can change the units via the file tab options. Let's use the keyboard shortcut. And then under advanced, I'm going to scroll down to the display section. And here we've got ruler units. I've got my default unit set, but I can choose inches, centimeters, or millimeters. I'm gonna leave it at my default because that's perfect for my needs. If you want to turn the ruler off, you can simply deselect it here or going back to normal view, We'll just display the regular row and column labels. If you open the same Excel files every single day, you waste precious minutes hunting them down and opening them manually. Instead, set them up to automatically open when you start Excel. Simply place them all in a folder together, then copy the path to that folder. You can right click and copy as path, or you can see the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift C. Once you've got the file path copied, go back to Excel, Go into your options, Alt FT, then under advanced, scroll all the way to the bottom. And then under the general group, we've got at startup, open all files in and control V to paste in your file path. Now you'll notice there's double quotes surrounding it. So delete them, go to the front and delete that one as well. Click OK. And next time you open Excel, it's going to open all the files in that folder ready for action without any extra clicks. When you type in a website or email address, Excel instantly turns it into a clickable blue hyperlink. That might be what you want, but if not, it just looks messy, replaces your formatting, and if you're working with raw data, it's just not helpful. To turn this default off, go to the options, Alt FT, and then under proofing, we've got auto correct options, and then under auto format as you type, we've got internet and network paths with hyperlinks. Deselect that, click OK and OK. And now when you type in your URL, web address or email address, it won't convert them. If you work with objects like shapes or icons or images like these ones here that are layered on top of one another, it can be frustrating selecting them one by one, especially if they're overlapping. Instead, on the Home tab, under Find and Select, you can convert your mouse to Select Objects mode. Then you can left click and drag to select objects. You can move them around as one. You simply have to enclose the whole object to ensure you've grabbed all of it. To exit select objects mode, you can go back to find and select and click it again. Or you can just press escape and now your mouse is back to normal. Now another shortcut if you just want to select all objects on your page is to select one and then control A to select them all. If you use the Edge browser, you may have noticed that it defaults to opening Excel files in Excel for the web. 
which is super annoying if your file contains features that aren't available in Excel or online yet. To fix this, in Microsoft Edge, click on the ellipsis in the top right, go into Settings, and then on the left, select Downloads, and here, turn off Open Office Files in the browser. This tells Edge not to open Excel, Word, or PowerPoint files in the browser, but to download them instead, letting you open them in the desktop app. If you work with large spreadsheets, the Focus Cell feature available to Microsoft 365 users highlights the row and column of the selected cell, making it easier to trace data across large ranges. You activate it on the View tab and then Focus Cell. And now wherever you click, it's going to be easy to see at a glance, highlighting the active row and column of your selected cell. You can also select a color of your choice via the drop down here. You can see we have the whole palette to choose from. You'll notice this also show auto highlight. Let me demonstrate how that works. We'll turn focus cell off. And then if I control F to use the find dialog box and we'll find Paseo, find next, it enables focus cell when in find mode, making it easy to see the selected cell in your worksheet. Once you go out of the Find dialog box, you can see Focus Cell is off. Excel is now finally set up to work for you, not against you. And like I promised at the beginning, you don't need to remember all these settings. I've put together a free cheat sheet with everything we covered today. You can keep it to hand as a quick reference guide. And then the link's in the description and pinned comment. If you want to take things a step further and make your most used tools just one click away, Check out this video next on a totally underrated Excel feature that can save you a ton of time. I'll see you there.